guys, welcome back to Xenom Deluxe Gaming. Today we are doing a review on Rayman Legends. It's a platformer about this guy with no legs. It's the last in its series so far. So let's get on to the story and plot. There is a whole story to Rayman and stuff, but that can be in another video. We're just doing a few so going to the story of Rayman Legends. Not the entire Rayman, just Rayman Legends. So, um, multiple times in the past, I'm here over and a bunch of other characters have been asleep on the, uh, the tree that just that, that tree here, and, um, an on command of. Basically, I don't know, I forgot what his name was, but big fat dream guy, I think. But when I was in the lobby back then, I could see him. Um, he is, um, take, tell the frog guy, the frog guy you're gonna see him in a second, to wake us up as there are multiple threats on the rise. It may seem, and it may seem like a repetitive story, like, Villains, you go to feed them, and it does seem like that when you first play the game. But after you play all the previous games and learn learn about it, you see they have got stories behind them, um, why they're here, that stuff. But it's never actually explored in this. Uh, they don't want to do loads of complicated lore because if you just have a PS4, um, you're not going to be able to have all the previous games in that. Yeah, that, that's the basic story, and each area has its own form of story. This one is a bunch of like small creatures called Tintsies. Yeah, you have to go rescue them from these goblin guys who are. Oh, I really remember reading their name, but now I can't remember these guys. Goblin pirates of never sure. Um, anyways. Um, the second world still, all the worlds have um, these guys in cages, but this one kind of focuses on the goblins who captured them all in the first place. The second world is about a bunch of toads who um, are just, they're just evil. I know, I know, I know, but they're just, they're just evil. They're not, they just want to control everything and don't want to capture things, not all the riches, they just want to take over. The third one is about a bunch of skeletons who are new who just love food too much, try to cook you, also like boxing, that, that's it for another video. Um, fourth one is about the evil of love, what I'm collecting here, the, what I'm collecting are these yellow flying things called lums, there's an evil version of them, bad lums, who are they're from, they're from a previous game, but they return in this one to the final boss. But, um, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's all for the plot. I might do a couple videos on this. Doing, like, a timeline or also maybe even all bosses video. I did want to do a video on this, but, what, like a year ago, but only wrong myself to do so. That, that's for the door and lock. Now we get into the gameplay. So, the gameplay and stuff. So, um, yeah, extra jump, click X in the air to like glide like that. L2 to run and scrap punch leg, leg stick to move about. Pretty simple. The music is nice and sometimes you hear in special occasions like a boss you can hear um, music from previous games and you can never you can never predict what the music is gonna be and you can't even like when you think previous game music you never actually sing for anything. And when you hear it you're like yeah. Um also I love the art background. You can't see much here but it is brilliant in loads of different and other levels. Um, not much for gameplay because 
usually focusing on the other stuff. But, uh, yeah, some level designs are really nice. And the theme of the worlds, the themes of the worlds, yeah, that's cool too. Not much I can think of in the gameplay section. Next section segment is going to be like types of levels because there's loads of interest. It's not just these kind of levels and then the boss. There's stuff in between or bonus optional things that I'm going to get into now. The second type, the second type of level, or third include bosses is music levels which are uh, well as you can probably tell oh, sorry about that um, music levels where you jump in beat with the music and um, it makes you do that by putting obstacles in the way so you must jump in the music and it all falls into a nice rhythm and um, some bits are so hard you have to listen to the music to try and figure out the rhythm of it to predict what's going to happen next. Usually the music that I speak of other music, but then sometimes I have something from well they are they're all spoofs of other music, but this one here I'm doing right now is from the like the main Bayman theme from the rock version. All these levels also have an 8-bit counterpart, where the music is all pixely 8-bit. But it's not just all digitally, it's also got a bonus twist to it. Like here, the screen goes upside down, or it splits in four or something, or goes super pixely like the music is. Sometimes the music's even better. And you, and this way I love. This is probably my least favourite type of distraction because it makes the screen go glitchy so you can't see it. This is, this is the, I'm going to say the last level of the game. Because it's the hardest to obtain and me is just the hardest to obtain. This is actually really hard, I've like just got to find the strip. This bit's annoying because it goes in so many. Yeah, and then there's another type. There's a third, the, like two more types of levels, or three, which we'll now get onto. Now, and the, a bit like. The fourth type of level, if you include the 8-bit versions of the songs, are invasion levels, which are speed ones, which you need to make it into to end in the quickest time possible to the time when the the rewards you get. But they're called invasion levels because the enemy from a different world is invading uh, another world. So, like in a castle, uh, they're supposed to be goblin fights. Now there's the toads from the swamps invading. They're probably the hardest aspect of the game. I got stuck on one for a year. I only just beat it like, today or something. It's, pretty, it's really difficult. I figured out an alternate solution where when you're running, you get a punch with you running, you do a spin attack, which is faster than normally running, so do that. Um, also, that forgot to include, forgot to include the boss battles, so I'll just show you. Now we have the bosses. Yeah. Um, each one is, each boss, unlike just being a big enemy that you fight, it has something special about them. This one, and this. More platform, more it's like it's like an arena 
kind of rounds with multiple rounds. It's not like a badass, it's not like a very last bit of a certain aspect. They're all fun and exclusive to fight. And all just like the battle is the worst thing to fight. Basically the same enemy. <laughs> All exclusive and very good. Way too much time. Wait, no, just so I'll just move them to the next. There's also the. Uh, I'm gonna call them character levels where you complete levels to unlock new characters. These ones are optional, the invasions, the invasions, um, the invasions, the fun, are all the optional ones, just completely for your characters. Um, uh, there's kind of two more, I'm only going to save one of them, the last one at the end. Kind of a separate thing. No, I'm gonna say it's a different game mode, not even a different type of game. Then there's back to origins. Like when you complete a level, you get punch scratch card, which can give you a ward. One of which is giving you access to a special level on uh, on the back to origins world or section, which are. Which are all recreations of the previous level of levels from the previous instalment back to Origins. Now, if this was going to be the grand finale of the series, I would not only do just the Origins, the previous game back to Origins, but maybe even a remake of the first one. Obviously, it wouldn't work because there were different abilities, but you could. Obviously, you just lay out the map the same. Also, we make the bosses. It, they're, they're, they're just good, like, if you have also have a Wii and you're deciding, hmm, back to Origins or Rayman Legends. Get Rayman Legends, or Rayman Origins or Rayman Legends. I would go for Rayman Legends because it really makes all the Rayman Origins levels. Some of the characters also return. But obviously, even if it wasn't perfect origins, you'd probably still choose Roman Legends because it's just good. It's better, I mean. I know, they're spending too much time on type of levels. Let's get into the aftermath on the levels and stuff. Because you beat the game, or how fast you beat the game. Hey, let, let's just go. Okay, so now we get to the aftermath. So in levels, obviously there's the Tinsies that you can rescue, and more coins, and um, catching the Tinsies isn't actually very repetitive, unless, um, because e in e each Tinsie's got like, their own special place they're in, so it's not repetitive unless you miss a Tinsy and you keep on replaying the same level just to find it. That that's when the problem comes in. Also, a bad thing I feel is scratch cards are kind of the excuse for the collectibles. So scratch cards, as I said, can give you back to origins level or they can give you a creature which is basically the collectible. Each creature has a different type of rarity and they give you like daily coins. But what else do they do? In the mobile version or in the mobile Rayman game, Rayman Adventures, you got these little you got these little creatures who help you on your missions. Each one has a type of power, which helps a lot, but these are just like... These, these are just like, kind of not worth it, but it is very satisfying watching them all fill up. Once you get a good feeling, you get them all. 
but when you beat the game, it you'll be left doing to do stuff. And then you're hundred. But then you're hundred percent the game, and you're like, oh boy, what am I gonna do now? Well, you're probably gonna ditch. Before then, you're probably gonna ditch the game and go on to something else. There are challenges which are kind of like a online mode. They change daily, and then you beat them, get higher in the ranks, because each one has their own ranking and leaderboard, get better and better, increase your actual rank, and then, and then they kind of go and repeat. Because rather like other games, I'll have, usually have other games, usually, Powered by a big team like Call of the Zombies. It's powered by EA, but it's properly owned by PopCap. However, Rayman does not have that. They just have Ubisoft, the big company that works on loads of games. They don't have a smaller company that can design more games, give it updates. It just has Ubisoft, so the Ubisoft doesn't really have the time. And. It has been ditched for a while. Like, no Rayman news ever. There have been some rumours about probably a remake of the first and original game. That that's very unlikely. Blue bunk. And that's basically it. <laughs> but it but if you get it, it is a quite bit. Also, those coins you collect go to new designs. I mean, skins for your characters. But eventually, the stretch between one character and another, you don't, you don't purchase them with the coins. You just unlock them when you get that amount of coins. So this is the most repetitive part. This is the thing you're going to be left doing the most, though, so it get, gets on your nerve and annoys you. There's just not much to talk about. It is a unique game, and it doesn't feel very oh, like, repetitive by doing the same thing over and over again. But besides when you're replaying a level over and over again, you get them at, like... Getting the tinsies, not a big problem. Aftermath content, not a big problem. Coins are a problem. You're going to be replaying levels to get all of them, and you're going to be doing it over and over again. Yeah, that that's big, because they're in the same places, don't have anything, unique locations. So now we get on to the verdict. So, it is a fun game. If you get stuck on a level, you can easily go back to previous levels and practice. Because unlike other games, you can't get stronger. You can only get skilled by getting better yourself. So you can easily go back to the same levels and you can go back to the same levels before. And um, just practice and get better. Because basically, Um, so you can go back, get better and more skilled at the game. Um, by doing the previous level we've already completed. Without feeling too strong and breathing for it. You can just get stronger and better. Or you can keep on replaying the level and get that couple of checkpoints play the same level. Like there are some really hard and difficult levels. But those are usually the ones either at the end or the most optional or boss. And the good thing is you don't have to complete an entire world to get to the next one. You just need to get a certain amount of tendencies to beat the next one. You can complete you can complete all the world but not beat all the bosses and then do all the big boss rush at the end. That's fun. that that really is gonna that might be fun. I might do a boss rush soon and do a video on it. Maybe this one, but overall I'm just gonna give it 
Because the problem is, coins get a bit repetitive. Over on your first proper playthrough, it sounds easy, it's fun, it'll be nice and everything. After you complete the game aftermath content, the Back to Origins thing is a good aftermath content. Bonus invasion levels, hard but still good. Coins can get repetitive. Tinsies can get annoying if you can't find them on a level. But besides that, good game. Uh, yeah, so 8.5.